Hello, welcome back to this week's episode of Rider Realities Tuesday Tip Podcast. I'm Caitlin, your host, and today I'm here with Esther Ryder again, and we're going to be talking about rentals. We're going to give you some details on Airbnbs, college rentals, traditional rentals, and... Okay, Esther, let's talk about... Which one do you want to talk about first? Well, since I have college written down first, let's okay. just start with that. So, it's become a trend that a lot of parents buy a house and then they rent it to their kids... And then sometimes they really like it and then they keep it and they end up running it out to like future college students Mm -hmm. and things like that. So let's talk a little bit about how someone could start that process. Well, and another part of that too, just to add to that is my brother-in-law graduated from high school in 1998 and went to the University of Akron his second year of college. And he bought a house real close to the campus and rented it to two buddies. So there were three of them living. Oh, so he bought it as mm-hmm. a college student. He did. Okay. Now, I think that if the the other two guys stay in there, they, their rent to him may have covered the whole mortgage or pretty close. So he kind of did it opposite where as a college student, he bought it. Now he's a very, very, very good saver and very into budgeting. And at the price point this house was at, it wasn't a you know crazy big down payment. Mm-hmm. A lot of kids straight out of high school may not have that option. And that's when the parents would come in. But just a heads up that you, if you're hearing this and you're a student, that's an option as well. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, you just rent out the rooms to buddies. I think they all went to high school together. That's how they knew each other. And, mm-hmm. that, you know, they were friends anyway. So it worked out. So that's a really good idea, actually. Yeah. Okay. So I think the first thing to talk about here is you need to make sure whether you're a student buying it or a parent buying it or just a landlord looking to buy in a college market, you need to make sure that you know what is allowed. So for example, we're not going to name colleges because then we can tell more of the fun stories, but okay. there's a college near where I, I had sold real estate and they there were tons of rentals because people were doing that. And then the college changed their policy where you had to live on campus unless you lived X amount of miles away. So literally overnight, all these people who had rentals that were they were renting to college kids could not rent to college kids. Mm -hmm. And those houses would not sell well because all of a sudden that not super big town was flooded with rentals that couldn't be rented. And there weren't enough people needing rentals for them to sell just to, you know, rent to other people in the area. Does that make sense? Yep. And then I love your story when you're working with a guy who wanted a college, yeah. a rental for his family to rent in the college town. And you found out that that wasn't allowed. Yes. And what was that all about? So that specific city has an ordinance where you cannot have more than two families in one household. So they would consider that. So like if you had three college students in one house, you're actually breaking the city ordinance. So we had discovered that in the process and then it fell through and he really ended up never buying for his son plus like COVID and some other things. But but wait, what did, this is my favorite part, what did they call it? Well, like the rumor around town was that they considered it to be like a brothel type thing, which to me is like, what? Yeah, but in the paperwork, like the actual city ordinance, it didn't say that. But from like word of mouth, that was kind of like the rumor around town that that's what the city council called it back in the day when they made that ordinance. So, which is so, so that's just terrible wording. Like, yeah. Doesn't even make sense. Yeah. And I think that one reason that, well, I know because I've heard that one reason that colleges are doing that is, you know, it it almost forces kids to have the dorm experience, but it also keeps money on campus, which I mean, not to fault them. Campuses need money as well. Oh yeah. It's absolutely a money thing, I think. But the main thing is just to be aware of that. So if you are a parent or a, uh, you know, potential college student, Mm -hmm. just make sure that you know of the rules of the campus that you are attending just to make sure and of the community. So in my example, it was the campus rules and your example, it was actually the the town that the college was in that could affect that. I think that another good point of doing the college rentals is you're, You can save your child a lot of money because of not living in the dorms and stuff, but it does also like a little bit more responsibility and freedom and like teaching them how to take care of their own house and and not be so reliant on just your room at a dorm room or something like that. Um, well, and cooking expenses too, because you're not eating in oh, the yeah. cafeteria. You can eat in the kitchen and make the food that way too. Right, and they learn to like budget that money and mm-hmm. it is a teaching experience, I think. But also, I always think about, I didn't 
or I did graduate from the college I started. My husband did not graduate from the college he started at. And I always think like, well, if his mom bought him this house at this school, she would have been kind of out of luck because then he switched it and then she would have had to sell it, which might have been okay or she might have rented it out. But it's something to keep in mind that like what if your student changes career paths or doesn't graduate from college or true because at 18 a lot of people don't know what they're doing or they change their mind right Mm -hmm. so that is something definitely that should be considered well then the last thing i think that i can think of for college rentals is that remember it's a rental and there are benefits to owning rental and i'm not an accountant so i'm not going to give advice here but just to say there's a reason people buy rentals as part of their investment portfolio and so if you're you know a parent doing that or a college student buying a rental, then there are certainly perks to that. And in addition, somebody else is making that payment for you. And eventually, if you keep it through the terms of your mortgage, then you know you would own that. And it's mm-hmm. another way to add to your portfolio because, of course, as a realtor, I think everyone should have real estate in their investment portfolio. So there's it has the perks of being a traditional rental. It just looks a little bit different. Mm-hmm. So now let's talk about traditional rentals. Okay. So my husband always wanted to own rentals, and I did too. And then we bought our first house. Then we were going to sell that and buy a duplex. And we even had one picked out. It was a family member's house, and then they decided not to not to sell it. They wanted to keep it. So we had one kid, and we were going to buy a you know start buy a two bedroom rental house. To start that portfolio, and then as we had more kids, we would just buy a single family house. Okay. And that we realized very quickly that with one child, even we were going to be in it wasn't going to last super long. Mm-hmm. And we were already talking about the second one, so we didn't do it and then didn't own a rental house until gosh, probably 10 12 years later. Okay. And we have one, and my husband's like, done. No more. And I know people who own multiples, and you have to understand, we have had and we've owned it like almost five years. I think, or four years, we have only had two tenants and they have, both sets of tenants have been amazing. Mm-hmm. But I think he sees and hears so many other people's stories, stories and yeah. we're so busy with businesses and for kids and their activities that the thought of owning another rental just overwhelms him and he's not at that point anymore. Mm-hmm. So I guess some things to talk about would be, let's start with the good of owning rentals. Okay. So you're diversifying your investment portfolio. You know, it's not all stocks or bonds or whatever. So that part is good. Some people like a rental because they can touch it, so to speak. Like if you have stocks and mutual funds, you can't go drive by it. But you can do that with a rental property. Some people see it as... You know, if you own X amount of units, then that can be your full-time job and you don't have to do anything else. So what are some things that you think are pluses about having rentals and that you've seen with your clients? Well, I think long-term, like real estate always in like long-term schemes always increases values. It might not increase value like year to year, but like traditionally over a 30 year, Mm -hmm. you're more than likely going to make your money back. So I think that is a part that really intrigues people and they like that thought. They like the thought of like, somebody else paying your bill Mm -hmm. and paying your investment and and that coming into play. But I guess I do see like how it can be such a scary thing. I've heard tons of landlord horror stories and it's something me and my husband are considering doing maybe in the near future. I don't know. We're kind of still up in the air on it because of the responsibility of being on call 24 seven. If something's broke, I want to be a good landlord. I don't want to be a slumlord. So that part would, I would want to be a very good landlord. I think you can't always make everybody happy, so I would struggle with that part, personally. Well, and so we'll just, we'll just squeeze this little part in because it's kind of the good and the bad. But the good is that if you don't want to get those phone calls and you you know maybe you don't have the flexibility to go to the house every time something needs to be done, mm-hmm. you can have management companies who do it. Mm-hmm. But the bad is that that cuts into your profit so it's kind of weighing it out like you know do I want to make less money but have less hassles you know if it's a bad management company who doesn't do a good job then that can create a whole nother set of problems but it can also be a way to make it easier to own a rental and since that's kind of a whole nother podcast topic in itself we'll kind of stop right there with that yeah that's another option that can kind of address you know like Ryan your husband works lots and lots of hours a week right it'll be harder for him to go take care of something but yet then if he doesn't then that eats into 
that profit too. Right. And then if you're not handy too, mm-hmm. and you have to hire somebody every time, that's going to cost you more money than if it's something you can fix on your own. Right. So those are all things to consider too. Yeah. So some, I guess, negative things potentially of owning a rental would be what if you're not getting paid yeah. or, you know, what if there is a major expense that you were not prepared for? And that's one reason that we never, you know, we always setting aside money from our rental to in case it needed a new roof, which it did to a year ago, I guess we needed to put that on. And so you just need to, a bad would be if you bought it and you really, it pushed your income limits mm-hmm. where, you know, you needed, you were dipping out of your, you were barely making money on the property to set aside to cover anything. So that could be a potential negative. I think another thing that people like about it too is being able to do like the refinancing or home equity on it and having those funds available if you're in an emergency where you need that for whatever other reason. Maybe it's not for that house. Maybe it's for the house you own or however that would work. And that's a topic about traditional rentals. And I think when people think about rentals, they automatically think of the traditional one. Mm -hmm. They may think of college. They may think of commercial, although we're not going to get into that at all, but that's another, you know, avenue. Some people might even think of leasing land. I know, you know, hunting land is a big thing around here. People like to lease hunting land somewhere. I think you're this next one that we're going to talk about. I think you're starting to see more and more of Mm -hmm. But it's not talked about a whole lot, especially here. And that is the Airbnb or the VRBO type of rental. Yeah, vacation rental. Yeah. Like bed and breakfast kind of Mm -hmm. scenarios. And it's interesting because you, I guess for the most part, I think of those being in vacation areas. Yeah. Or even like, you know, whether it's a place like the beach or... The mountains or, you know, a state park. You don't always think of them being other places. And yet I'm hearing of people having them in, you know, smaller towns or college towns again because parents are coming to visit. I have some friends who moved out of state up here and lived in an Airbnb, rented it for two months. And it was not at all in a vacation area Mm -hmm. whatsoever, but that person had been able to use that for that purpose. So I don't know that we hear as much about owning those here. Usually we're going somewhere else, but that is another form of a rental property. So I think that the difference in those one of the main differences is that you have to have those kind of like fully stocked. Like you're buying furniture, mm-hmm. meats, some stuff that people would need while they're just there for a night. Beds, mattresses, mm-hmm. refrigerator, like appliances. You're buying all of that up front. Yes. So how... Okay, as so you Plus have, replenishing things too. Yes. So we were in one... And usually your cleaning people can do that. But we were in one not long ago. There were two bathrooms... And mm-hmm. two rolls of toilet paper. That was mm-hmm. it. One per bathroom. Mm-hmm. So it's like during a football game that we were watching as a family. And I'm going to Walmart to go replenish toilet paper because I didn't think about bringing that. So, but you are like, you're replenishing some things like that or, you know, dishwashing detergent or whatever. So there are some expenses there. And, and those are all about reviews. Yes. So like doing those things gives you the good reviews to keep the customers coming. Right. And those, those reviews are instant where your reviews as a traditional landlord are going to be like your long-term tenant, kind of more like word of mouth, like, Hey, stay away from this house kind of deal. Right. One of my best friends, her sister cleans these rental places Mm -hmm. in Idaho by, there's a big lake up there. That's a big tourist place seasonal. And I have her, I know somebody else who owns one in there and they say that the best way to get the good reviews and stuff is to have a good cleaning crew. Oh, if you have people who don't clean well, it doesn't matter what, mm-hmm. how updated it is or what your view is, you're going to get bad reviews. Mm-hmm. And we stay at those all the time because of our family size. With mm-hmm. four kids, it's hard to get, you know, hotel rooms and a lot of hotels won't accommodate that or they only have so many rooms that have the sleeper sofa that we need. So we have found it cheaper to stay in those. And I can see what that, that that is the case. Mm-hmm. So unlike a traditional rental where it's being cleaned once your tenants move out maybe every year or two, it cannot be managed by you to some degree if you live far away. You've got to have people that you count on for cleaning. Lawn care, Uh pool, pool care. Right. All of that stuff. Yeah. And maybe even the management of booking. That's a whole nother situation. But Mm -hmm. it's that it's there are some components that are the same, but there are some that are different. 
So I have two experiences of staying at an Airbnb type place just recently. The one time was a whole house. We stayed at Marco Island in Florida and the owner actually met us at the house the day of check-in. He went over everything in the house I and mean, his house was spotless. He had a whole book on the table of anything we needed to know. He had, um, it was on a canal and he had kayaks and life jackets and he actually kind of had like rules and was like, if you take these in the water, you need to spray them off with the hose, but it kept all of the stuff nice and spotless and it wasn't just junk. And then this summer we went and stayed at another condo and our experience with this was like when we came, this was also during COVID. So I really expected everything to be super clean and it really wasn't up to the standards that I did. So I wanted, so I did not leave them a five star. I gave them like four, uh, but there was just like black hair, which it might've been the maid's hair or it might've been the people before it, like long black hair all over the house. My kids would drop toys underneath the couch and I was like, oh my gosh, nobody had ever swept underneath these couches. Mm-hmm. And just my experience with those two were completely different. The second one only had one roll of toilet paper per house. We didn't mm-hmm. have extra paper towels. We didn't have like just seasonings and stuff to cook. There wasn't a ton of that there. And then we went from that experience that was at the other house, which was just all over the top, completely clean, extras galore. And and that definitely made a big impact on which one we would choose to go again. Right. So a number of years ago, we, in a partnership with my husband's brother and sister-in-law and my husband's parents, had a Airbnb house. And my mother-in-law would always clean it. She wanted to make sure it was done correctly. And even when we said, just let's just hire somebody or we know we'll take turns or whatever. She wanted to make sure it was done Mm -hmm. for that same reason. Mm -hmm. So if you're thinking about owning a, a, a rental place like this, we just can't stress enough that no matter where it is, whether it's local to your house or further away, or you clean it or somebody else, you've got to have a good, you know, people who clean it. But some of the stories that she could tell were just kind of funny. I mean, we never had any problems. Everyone kept it very clean. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there were times things would get left behind. I remember her telling a story about calling us and she's like, somebody left behind their heart boxers on the bed. And she's (laughs) like, only only one guy's name was on the rental. She's like, I don't know if he was there with wife or girlfriend or what. She goes, do I mail them back to him? (laughs) Like, you guess what we do? You left something. Yes. And she's like, I don't know if they're clean. I don't know if they're dirty. But there is definitely some stories to tell. And, you know, the the finances are different because you're getting more rent for a shorter amount of time. Mm -hmm. But you're also paying all the utilities and stuff, too. Mm -hmm. It's definitely not for everyone. I would say, you know, I'm picturing like somebody who like my grandparents lived in Canton, Ohio and owned a house in Florida. Mm -hmm. It's not for everybody just because, again, you can't drive by it. You're not going to go check on your tenants. You're really counting on other people. To, you're really counting on other people to keep it clean and stuff. So it looks a little bit different, but it is just another opportunity to own real estate as an investment. And since we are real estate nerds, we wanted to bring that out to you guys and share that. Yeah. And it's definitely becoming more trendy around here, which mm-hmm. and I don't think that many people vacation in Ohio, but you're right, like College Town. I seen one recently in a really small town, Salem, Ohio. And I was like, why would anyone want to rent there? But it was decorated so cute and cozy. It was like, oh, this would be a good little fun getaway for a date night or Mm -hmm. with COVID people can't travel as much. And it's a great little fun getaway without having to buy a plane ticket or rent a car or pack a week's worth of clothes and all that kind of stuff. And you definitely want to make sure that there is some kind of rental desire for that area. But you're right. People do it for all kinds of reasons. Ours was people who were skiing because there was a ski place like, I don't know, 45 minutes away. People who were having bachelorette parties or family get together. So like maybe the grandparents were from, you know, a town 30 minutes away, but they had four kids out of state. Mm -hmm. They might come and then run a house. They could all be together. A group of women getting together for their Bible study weekend or or a girls weekend. So there's definitely lots of places that it could go. But again, just process that and do your research to make sure you're buying it and a place where you could actually rent it. Mm -hmm. And 
Caitlin and I are in no position to advise you on where that would be. But the nice thing is you can, there's all kinds of sites and places that you can see where that would be a possibility to go and why, you Mm -hmm. know, based on where you live or where you would like to be. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, I think that wraps up today's episode talking about all kinds of rentals. Uh, we love to hear you from you. We like you to like, subscribe, share, um, give us ideas of topics. We're always open to those. And thank you for coming today, Esta. Oh, sure. We'll see you next week. I always week. love to talk to you, Caitlin. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>